there's been a huge resurgence at McLaren. They are suddenly the car to They're beat. So good. And They're cheating. after a, after a few, <laughs> well, they may be. Let's get to that later. After a few races where their strategy has been in disarray, they've mm. turned it all around in Hungary by being a completely different kind of disarray. <laughs> and they they locked out the front row, which Nailed. I want friggin' credit for this. I okay. predicted they were going to lock out the front row. I predicted Piastri was going to win. Well, I, I ruined it for tense, but I had that stuff all good. But despite locking out the front row, despite getting the one-two finish they so badly wanted, and despite Piastri winning, everybody's losing their mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> so True. what the heck is going on here? What the heck is going on here? Well, the thing is... This is what we've known. I personally, after those Norris comments about Daniel Ricciardo years ago, I was like, that's come from nowhere, mate. I thought you were what? like, no, no. So nice. tell us what comments you're talking about. Didn't he say that I couldn't care less about Daniel Ricciardo? Maybe it might have been like, you've given your space away earlier in the season. Would you give it back late in the season? Yeah, that kind of quick pro quo. And he was just like, no. Like, it just, every driver's out for themselves. Like, he essentially just said, no, every Formula One driver's the same. We're all out for ourselves. You've got to look after yourself. Um, so that's his, that's where he's coming from. Right. Okay. And then that, for that to kind of come up again this weekend for his team to be like, Hey, by the way, though, we do win championships as a team and you're going to need <laughs> yes. your other guy at some point. He's like, I don't know, man, this is pretty sweet <laughs> at the front though. These guys can fuck right off behind me. <laughs> this is, and, yeah. Mm, this is the crux, I think of it. So ironically, after what happened in Austria, where, mm. Max, I mean, I can't stress this enough, Max Verstappen drove into Lando Norris and ruined both of their races and well deserved his penalty. Let's put that to bed. Yeah, we, that's, everyone that's was asking podcast stance on that. We totally everyone agree. was asking Lando Norris, you didn't race him very hard, which, to which I would say, oh, what the fuck? But mm. they said, are you too nice of a guy? Are you too nice of a guy to win a championship? Are you missing that go for the jugular? When it all costs uh, mm. drive that it takes to be a champion, like a Schumacher, like a Verstappen, like a Senna, or whatever. Mm. And he thought about it and he said, No, I, I don't need to drive like an asshole. I can win. I can be a good guy and I can still win. So I don't need to be the bad guy. Yeah. So cut to literally the next day <laughs> after coming on pole and in his mind, just ticking up another been, win for yeah, him, like easy. his number, his second win in the sport. Mm. Completely Weber's the start follows his teammate around for 50 laps and then gets a better pit uh, preference from his team, which results in him winding up in front of his teammate because they prioritized him instead of the guy who, sh who was running first, which is who you normally prioritize. Mm. And then they ask him, oh, but by the way, could you please give that position Just back? And he was back. like, well, I can't. I'm going into a tunnel, bad reception <laughs> yeah. here in Hungary. Can't hear anything you say, hearing, mate. Would you like me to have some crack that seems weird like <laughs> while i'm in the middle of the race Randa, could like... you give that position back yeah you can eat them it's okay yeah <laughs> no i'm done with them no 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 no. i'll have the steak not the chicken tonight okay. that's fine yeah whatever all passengers bored and gayed out i think we're getting some cross chatter here i can't hear anything you're saying now <laughs> I mean, I th I've got some hot takes about who I think is to blame and oh, please. What, what should have been done differently. Let but me I don't be know in the react think. position for once, instead of you having to sit there being like, oh God, here we go. Another Zach Rant. <laughs> like, so you, there's, you uh, fine, yeah, geez, enough. There's Oscar Piastri, there's Lando Norris and there's McLaren. So who do I think did something wrong or, or deserves any blame if there is some? Oscar Piastri. Don't don't, he doesn't, angel. he deserves almost no blame. He is he, God's child. He drove a little bit scrappy, he had a few wheels in the grass and just, I don't know, lost a bit of pace when he really probably, it would have helped him if mm. he could have had a bit of pace. But other than that, he didn't do anything wrong, bro. Everything's fine there. You're all is forgiven. Lando Norris and McLaren. Now, if I were McLaren, there's a few things you could have done differently. So number one, if you're going to pull a move like this, where you, 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 say, you, you pit the drivers in a way that benefits Norris and protects him from a charge... Mm. from P3 and P4 so that mm. he can retain P2, you probably got to tell him beforehand yeah, that's before why you pit him, yeah. we're going to pit you early, but you've got to promise to give it back <laughs> yeah, to Piastri. We're not pitting you for the lead. Yes. If it turns out that way, fine, <laughs> but you give that spot back, but we're pitting you to protect you from this. Yeah. The huge mistake they made was waiting until after all of the pit stops had been done to then tell him their plan. That was obviously mm. a horrendous mistake. And obviously they like had not 
this could be your LinkedIn post for the week. Like <laughs> what I what I learned from yeah. the Hungarian Grand Prix what, about I mean, communication I, and open communication. I can't do that because I made fun of somebody for talking about how uh, Max Verstappen driving into Lando Norris, and the post was literally what I what what Lando Norris and the Max Verstappen oh. battle taught me about B two B marketing. <laughs> There's nothing. The good thing about B two B marketing is everyone knows how to do it, and there's nothing left to learn. So <laughs> you know, good. it's brilliant. Um, so McLaren, McLaren could have made some number one planned it differently. Mm. Could have communicated it differently. The other thing they could have done is not done what they did. They should have just pitted Piastri, let yeah. Lando Norris fight it out for P three. If that's this the way so it falls, this is the. I mean, it's not so much that I want to. I like put Norris in peril as much as you've got to protect Piastri when he has earned that P1 position. You've got to let him keep it. Yep. I'm here for that. I'm here for that. So who's there's, that means there's funny. You've done two out of the three names you mentioned. Yeah. Piastri and McLaren. There's a little now bit Lando of fault Norris. on McLaren. There's only one there's, left. Orlando because Norris. everybody, everybody in threads land, which mm. I don't know if you've been on threads recently or ever in the F1 threads world, but it's because Lando Norris joined threads. It has been completely flooded by, Mm. Right, literally millions of Lando Norris fangirls, and there is nothing but wall to wall Lando Norris cope going on mm. on that on that site. The problem for me with Lando Norris and what he did is number one, the team told you many, 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 many times to give the position back, and you did not. That's a choice that you made. <laughs> that now McLaren made McLaren looked after you with their strategy, and you chose to ignore it for a good long time. Mm. Now they begged him and they pleaded with him and they. Manipulated and blackmailed him. Yeah. <laughs> so say, give it back. And he did in the end. Yeah. On his own Golf terms. Club. Golf club yeah. for you. When he was good and ready. Here's my hot take about this. And I wonder what you think about this. He should have just fucking done it straight away. Yep. And then when what? You and know, then he had 20 laps. Yeah. He could have had 20 laps. Won the fucking race. Yep. He could, he could have easily won no, the race from there. I think he could. I don't think he thought he could. He threw it away. Yep. That's my hot take. That's, I think that's a really good take. And I think that that is one of the things I find really interesting about all of these young drivers is that some of them are really maturing into like adults who are grown up drivers. And some of them are still like, I only know how to do this way. I've had success from being a baby. Um, <laughs> I don't really from know anything else. Like this is, this is all I know how to do. And so I, maybe he just thought he wouldn't, maybe if he, it's almost like it was too awkward. If it was only five laps, he could have just kept talking and then made it to the end. And been like, oh, guys, it just didn't well, happen. And you know, Oscar wasn't right behind me. For 18 for laps, to make such a big deal out of it yeah. and then still give the position back. It's like, why don't yeah. you just do that? I know. Because that's what children are like. They're, you can't reason with them, Rod. You know. You know, they're but unreasonable. I, <laughs> but I spent days justifying it to myself to say, no, look, Lando's a pure racer. This is what happens when you put a pure racer in a position like that. So it's not Lando's yeah. fault. But I've I've actually... I don't know. I'm swinging around on that. I think that's, I think there is a bit of bullshit to this thing around like the cutthroat drivers have to, that's the only way they can win and that they are, you know, you have to take every minute and every, every point that's available. And I think that, I think that there is correlation, not causation there. I think that happens that the guys who are really good. Uh, who can win championships these days are number one drivers in their teams and are more likely just to be like, I kind of know my position in this team here. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I kind of want. Uh, and you're not really going to get rid of me because of bringing all this sponsorship money and you can't really, like, you can't really discipline me in any way, shape, or form. Right. And it's very clear. Where we find this is where it is very unclear who's the boss in these teams. And so you see it at a lot of, you see, I mean, I think you're seeing it now because Oscar is really good. In a really good car. Like, I'm not saying he's like a world champion or anything like that. The car is excellent right now. Lando Norris, I also knew, was an excellent driver. And he's probably a better driver than Piastri at this point in their careers. And you would expect that. You know, Norris has been driving for years and years and years in Formula One. But it is currently unclear if they have a one-two driver strategy. And they probably kind of do. But at the same time, it's it, not clear enough within the team to be like, Hey, Oscar, jump the fuck out of the way. This guy's going to try and win the world championship. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think when they're leading the constructors, they'll be in mm. a better position to have a conversation about what they do with the drivers. Yeah. But their goal is clearly win the constructors and they still have a job to do there and they're going to need Piastri to keep doing what he's doing if they're mm -hmm. going to do that. 
but it is, I think, the only logical place to arrive at for all the people who are defending Lando Norris. Like, if there's a number one driver situation at that team, then sure, of yeah. course, things are different. But they seemingly maybe don't. The thing about it is you've got to be crystal clear, we do or we don't. Yeah, exactly. It's. I mean, this is where Ferrari's always run into the problem, right? It's not really a problem when you're poodling around in fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. <laughs> that like the drive, the, the drivers aren't too concerned. They're like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, if he's on the slightly mm. faster, that I'll just pop and you go. It's when they started getting close to winning races that they suddenly were like, oh, mm. do the Claire and Sainz even like each other? I have no clue because the Claire will be like, I'm right behind him, get him out of the way. And Sainz is like, you told me to keep my tires like fresh, so but I don't yeah. really want to give up a position. Yeah, uh, it'd be but, interesting uh, to see a Ferrari get really good next year, and then you've got Leclerc <laughs> and Hamilton, and Hamilton's not going to budge, mate. I'm sorry, in the kindest way possible. Hamilton wants to go and win a world championship to finish his career, and Leclerc mm -hmm. would like to just win some more races, <laughs> please God. So, yeah, there's no, not going to be any clear structure there. So, I think it's less about drivers having this drive to survive, fucking like, oh, I'll do I'll you know do anything to win a race and I'll never listen to my team. Like That's impossible <laughs> because all the teams are like highly strung, like well-oiled machines now. And the successful teams over the last decade have had a number one and a number two. That's that's literally it. So it'd be really interesting to see another team try to do it without that structure. And the only reason Mercedes managed to do it with Hamilton and Rosberg is because they were just so much better than everybody else that season as well. Like they could actually have their two drivers somewhat duke it out a little bit. Yeah. But these days we've got, there's, and I suppose that's why, and I don't know if you want to transition at all, but I think that's why there's so much pressure on Perez right now because they don't, they're just not as good as they used to be. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's fine for Perez to not be firing as long as he's sort of there or thereabouts and Max is dominating and, and you can almost pencil in all of his wins for mm. the rest of the season. Everyone feels a lot more comfortable when you can do that. When you can't do that, it becomes quite a lot more of a problem. We've got a question in the chat, but I first do want to finish off on the McLaren thing, which was to say that uh, it was it was mentioned in the chat, like in the team radio calls to say, hey, Lando, remember, you've got a long season ahead. We've got yeah. every Sunday morning meeting. Just think of that and then you'll make the, the right morning. decision. And some people called that out to say like, Lando Norris is quite open and frank about his mental health challenges. And to be putting that kind of pressure on him is not cool and for me mm. that doesn't i mean i'm very sensitive to those issues but mm. that just frankly doesn't really hold a lot of water for me because they asked him repeatedly many many times to do something and he didn't do it mm. people are also making a lot out of the fact that oh he grew a three second gap out to a six second gap it's like well yeah that's because oscar piastri was behind chewing up his tires trying to close in expecting to get that position back and he didn't i'm surprised he didn't yeah. crash the car <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I think but I think you're right about that second point. I think the first point, I think that there's there's a that quote as well, that radio message is I think reminding him that hey, every Sunday morning they must discuss how we race as a team. We don't crash into each other, we're gonna play together nicely. Uh, and that they must have some guiding principles as a team around how they work. And I think that's I don't think it'd be understated how good McLaren have gotten at this game. You know, I think Zach Brown's done, it's not just him. He would be the first person to say that it's not just him. But, you know, I can't remember everybody's names at McLaren. But they, have re <laughs> they have steadily been improving for the last six years. Like, just like slowly every weekend being like, right, keep your eyes on the horizon, keep driving, keep moving. And it's probably stuff like that. It's probably like we race as a team. We listen to what our engineers have to say. You know, it's not going to take Toto. I know it's not Toto, but like you don't hear Toto. Like Toto gets on the radio a little bit at Mercedes <laughs> or used to. And I don't think Zach Brown, did he get on the radio this week and tell Lando what to do? No, he's not that kind of. No, manager. the team principal didn't either. They left it all to the other, to the yeah. other folks. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Take that. that. That's what I've learned about there how to manage go. teams. That's going to be my LinkedIn post. You know, if you're going to give people responsibilities, let them use it. Message in the in the chat saying the McLaren radio to Lando sounded like a negotiator talking down a <laughs> bomber at times. Think of your family, etc. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, what are you doing to us? <laughs> this isn't how Another... we ended it, expected it to go. <laughs> Drive your own race and you'll be just fine. You scratch your back and I'll scratch mine. Need my help. Pull my hat over my. Oh, my radio doesn't work.